How's it going? As you probably know, I do a lot of live streams, but I totally understand that not everybody has two hours to sit down and watch a whole live stream. But in those live streams, we do cover quite a few useful topics, and they're a bit of fun. This video is a condensed version of some of the most important parts of one of those live streams. I hope it's useful to you, but even more, I hope you'll join us on a live stream. Here we go. So Keaton's got great instructions. Uh, I already actually skipped the first page. I'm not even going to bother with this part. You have to make a an input text, and this is just to give you some way to confirm that it worked at the end. All right, so you make an input text entity, and you just copy and paste this. You don't have to make any changes to it. Okay, not going to go into that in any more detail than that. This is the part people are going to get hung up on. It's making the custom skill. Okay, so to make the custom skill, you go to this developer.amazon.com website, and you log in with your regular Amazon uh, credentials, right? You don't have to set up a dev account. You just, you go to this console and you log in with whatever your normal Amazon credentials are. And then we're going to create a skill. He really does give you everything you need. We're going to, we're going to do this. Uh, we're going to call this whatever you want to call it. Intent uh, demo. That's all I'm going to call mine. All right. Uh, we want to use custom. So that needs to be selected. Great. And we want to use Python. So that needs to be selected down there. And that's all. Those two things. We put a name. We did custom. We did Python. And now create skill. Okay. The skill we want to copy for a template is just hello world. Doesn't really matter. Because we throw away all the code that they have in there anyways. All right. Built the skill. We can get rid of these. Uh, next thing, the world skill, wait for it to do its thing. You get this page. Okay. Phew. We need to add a couple of new intents over here. So click add, and then you can, uh, type in, oh, we want to use existing intent from the built-in libraries. Okay. So we go here and the two intents that we need are the yes intent and the no intent. Okay. So easy thing to do, go here and search for yes. And there's the yes intent and you can just click add intent. So we add that intent, it says added, you're done. Then you do no, we wanna add the no intent. Added, done, okay? I think that's it, let's see. Built-in libraries, yes intent, no intent. Okay, perfect. Now we're gonna to go to the invocation. So this invocation, is important. This is how you're going to tell Betty to enable this skill. This is what you have to say, like, you know, enable to you convert or whatever. Uh, I tried using a fancy, unique name in here and I caused myself a bunch of problems. Okay. So invocation, um, change it to custom actions. Okay. That just makes it easy. That way we're all saying the same thing to her to initiate this. You can technically make this something uh, unique to you, but you don't have to. And I'm going to change it because I already have one that's, that's that. So don't pay attention to me. Um, <laughs> I'm going to make it custom deviation. Click build model. Once you've got this invocation name, uh, and you want custom actions in there, not custom deviation, but once you've got that done, you hit build model. All right, <clears throat> let's go to the next step. So we built the model, we made it for it to complete. Now we have to configure account linking. This is the part that everybody's been really hung up on. All right, uh, here we go. go. Over here and click on, let's find account linking. Let's see, make sure I'm getting the right place. Near the bottom, account linking and click on it. All right, and you do want this toggle on and this toggle off. Um, so enable the toggle for, do you allow users to create an account? Do you allow users to create an account? Yes. Okay. Um, the next one is allow users enable a skill without account linking recommended. We're going to turn that off. It'll enable it by default. We need to disable it. So when you enable this one, this one gets enabled. We need to disable it. Okay. All right. So now down here, we have a few things we need to do. 
Under the authorized URI, provide your home assistant URL followed by auth author, authorized. Now, you, what you need to put here, I mean, he's got, he gives you the example, you know, right here. And I'm not going to put my Nabucasa in there. Um, you need your outside accessible URL for Home Assistant in this space right here, whatever it might be. If you have to have port 8123 there, you would just skip this whole account linking step. So in this box, you put whatever Home Assistant Nabucasa. And then in this box, you do the same thing, but instead of auth authorized, you say auth token. Okay, but this part will be the same. The HTTPS part at the beginning will be the same. Okay, client ID. If you're in the US, there's one URL. If you're in the EU, there's a different one. And if you're in, I guess that's Japan and Australia, then there's another one. So for me in the US, I'm going to use this one. Copy that guy, paste it in there. Done. Uh, the secret type anything. So I just typed in a bunch of googly blah, 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 like that. You don't have to remember it. You don't need to know it at all. Uh, you just have to have something in there. So there you go. Uh, so we put in a random crazy secret here. We put in our client ID there. The, uh, authentication scheme, the one we want to use is credentials in request body. Again, this is only if you, if you don't use a port at the to, to access your home system, right? So this is going to be Nabucasa and probably a few others. All right. Last click add scope. And under here you put smart home. All right. And add scope, smart home, click save in the upper right. Done. Okay. Moving on, moving on. Next, we're going to add the code. So we saved it. Say the changes are successfully saved. Now we need to go up here. I know at least one person got stumped by not being able to find this, but near the top of the page, it says code. Click on the code. Here's the example code, this Lambda function PY. We're just going to scrap all that. Bye-bye. Poof. <laughs> Nothing there. Okay. We're going to go to this uh, repository. Go up here to the top. I'm going to open in a new tab, open the code in a new tab. And here he has a Lambda function PY. So just grab all this. It's long, almost ran out of Copy that guy, take it over here and paste it in. Bingo. And then there is one place that you have to change a couple things. And that's right here. And what you have to do here is put in again your home assistant URL that you use to access from outside. Now, if you use a long lived access token, you still need this, right? This part you still put in because you can't not put that in or it'll never connect to home assistant. Replace this with the URL for your home assistant front end. So you're gonna put in here, you know, whatever your duck DNS or whatever your Nabucasa or whatever you use. And here you can, um, you could put the port. So if you had, you know, if this was something where you accessed it through port 8123, you could do that. Uh, if you're using, if you're using an S here, then you make this true. And for Nabucasa, you make it true and it works great. Now, if you uh, do have this port problem, or let's call it an option. That's not, it's not a problem. It's an option, right? We need, the world needs variation. <laughs> So if you're using a port here and you were not able to do the account linking from earlier, so if you're not able to do the account linking from earlier, then you need to put a long lived access token here to get a long lived access token. If you have never done it and you don't know where it is, you do it through, I believe it's this page, long lived access token. And I'm going to give you access to this long lived access token because I'm just going to delete it. <laughs> so I don't care. Um, so you'd scroll down here to the bottom. So you go to your profile page in Home Assistant, scroll down here to the bottom, create token, give it a name. You're gonna to wanna to call this, okay? Or whatever you wanna call it, just call it something. And then it will give you the token. Copy that token. It will not be shown again. Disappears forever. Okay, so we copied that token. 
and now it's gonna appear down here. Okay, so then I'm gonna put that long live access token right there. Okay, basically that's like your, um, your password. That's giving this thing access to your home assistant forever. All right, and that's it. So you, you have to put in these things here. If you are using, you know, if you, if you were successfully able to use the account linking step, then you do not need a long lived access token. That's it. Okay. Once we're done with that, we can deploy. Let's make sure we've got this part right. Uh, we did that part. Adding the code is the part we were on. We, if you need to ignore SSL verification, you can set that to false. Okay. Some of those things you're going to just have to know for your instance, I suppose, but I think for the most part, this is going to work. So we're done here. We've, we've done what we need to do. We pasted in this code. We put in our home assistant URL, the way we access, access home assistant externally. If we're using encryption, that is, if we have an S here, then we say true. If we did not have an S here, which is scary, hopefully everybody does, then you would put false. And then if you're not sure whether it's going to work or not, you can just put in a long lived access token down there. And then that's it. We're going to save that. And we're going to deploy it. Completed all the steps to create your custom skill. You can now, here we go. You have to do this part. I think this part gets lost a lot. Um, you go to, you have to go to your Betty app, or you can also do it through, uh, you can also do it through the, um, through the web page. But you do have to go here and actually enable the skill. So you go to skills and then your skills and then dev skills. And I now have two. Um, when you first click on this and enable it. So if I like, if I disable my actual skill, that's actually working and then enable it, it's going to take me to home assistant and it's going to ask me to log in. Okay. Now, if you're a good boy like me, uh, you have two factor authentication and now I am logged in and then you say open custom actions. And the reason we, in custom actions, this is what we put in our invocation text. So if we go back here to the skills and we go to this one, in our invocation text here, this is custom actions, right? That's what it should be. So that's the same as this. That's how you initiate it. You get her started. If you need help or want to chat with me or others who also enjoy projects like this, you can find us on Facebook and Discord. If you like what I'm doing and you want to support me, you can use my special product links in the video description or head over to Patreon or just like and share my videos. That's easy.